Hello and welcome viewers and subscribers of AVG News. Mkolisi, the son of Nube is my name and I hope I find you well wherever you are. It's a Friday. I know people are already bracing themselves for a wonderful weekend. While others, of course, will be working during the week. I mean, during the weekend. But I decided that before I go on my weekend, I should respond to a number of questions that I'm getting from ZEP holders who are trying to migrate to the mainstream South African visas or those that are still trying to elongate their stay in South Africa legally. So there are a number of questions that I've been getting from people and those are the ones that I'm, I want to respond to. The first question being, people have been to VFS global offices to collect their waiver outcomes after getting emails from the Department of Home Affairs that the outcome is out and they have gone there according to what many have said and they've been told by VFS staff or rather they've been turned away by VFS staff telling them that they no longer need the waivers and they must go and apply for a mainstream that is general work visa. These are the questions that I need to, uh, to respond to. There are many others of course who have received emails from the Department of Home Affairs but they don't know what to do with them in order for them to access the outcome of their waivers. They are asking if they should go physically to VFS offices and collect the outcomes based on the information that they are getting that those that have been there have largely been turned away. So this is what I want to respond to. And many, based on the two uh, types of information, are then asking is it still necessary for someone who is on the ZEP to apply for a waiver before they go and uh, apply for a general work visa? I think we have responded to this question a number of times, but I'm going to respond to it again today because it seems there is a lot of conflicting messages that people are getting, mixed messaging that people are getting both from their colleagues and from uh, VFS officials, but also from some non-governmental organizations that they've been interacting with and from several groups that they've been uh, added into, that is especially on WhatsApp. But before I go ahead, I would like to request that you subscribe to this channel, like this video and share it so that it gets as far and wide as it can so that many people who are in this kind of a situation will be able to know what to do and the correct position. So the first question that I will attempt to answer is uh, is the waiver still necessary? Is the waiver still necessary for someone who is on the Zimbabwe exemption permit? before they can apply for a mainstream South African permit, be it a work visa, be it a business permit. So I think I am attempting this question, or I am answering this question for the umpteenth time. Uh, I have several times read out my interaction with the spokesperson of the Minister of Home Affairs and stated it clearly that those who are on the ZEP who want to migrate to either uh, a business permit without meeting the threshold of 5 million and the other requirements like employing 50% locals, if is it, uh, and other such issues or being in the business sector that is not allowed for a non-South African, must apply for a general, I mean for a waiver first. And I will read again this message. One needs to apply first for a waiver. But not only that, and await the outcome. This is clear and straightforward. One needs to apply for a waiver and await the outcome before commencing with a general 
work visa application. The circular issued by the Minister of Home Affairs is not a blanket waiver. So, you need to apply for a waiver and await the outcome before you can commence with a general work visa application. I hope this sums it up and we are not going to revisit this. Forget what you have been told at VFS. If you are on the ZEP and you want to migrate to a general work visa, you need to first apply for a waiver. Then after you have been granted a waiver, you then apply for a general work visa. I will read it again. There are three key elements. One needs to apply for a waiver. That's the first thing. The second thing is await the outcome. The third one is then you apply for a general work visa. So without applying for a waiver and getting the outcome, you cannot apply for a general work visa. Forget what else you have been told by anybody anyway. If you are on the ZEP and you want to apply for a general work visa, first apply for a waiver. If you have applied for the waiver, await the outcome. If the outcome comes positive and you have been granted the waiver, then apply for a general work visa. Again, if you are applying for a business permit and you don't meet the requirements for a business permit, and you are on the ZEP, please apply for a waiver and await the outcome. Uh, we, and then the, the, the spokesperson of the minister then says, waivers are still in fact necessary. And then he went on and said, then I was asking that people have been going to the VFS and they've been turned away, they've been told that the waiver is no longer needed. And he says, they need a waiver first. That enables them to apply for a general work visa. Which means, in a clear and straightforward manner, if you don't have a waiver, you cannot apply for a general work visa if you are on the ZEP and you don't meet the qualification criteria. So, I hope that has been cleared. And then the second part of my broadcast is about those who have applied for the waivers and the outcome has come. And they've been emailed and they're asking, what is it that they need? Do they still need to go to VFS, considering that many have gone there and they've been turned back? Uh, do they still need to go there and collect the outcome? There is a circular from uh, a statement, let me say, from the minister which was released on the 29th of august 2024 let me say which is dated 29th of august 2024 home affairs takes first small but meaningful step towards digital transformation it speaks to zimbabweans who are on the waiver the circled paragraphs are of particular importance this means that, so I'll read the first two paragraphs so that you get the context. It is symbolically important. In a symbolically important first step towards the digital transformation of the department, the Minister of Home Affairs, Dr. Leon Schreper, has instituted a new rule to deliver the outcomes of visa waiver applications digitally via email to applicants in the first phase of the rollout of this process, the outcome of waiver applications for holders of Zimbabwe exemption permits, ZEPs, will be sent digitally, effective immediately. Over time, this digital first approach will be extended to other applicants in the visa and permit regime. Then the second paragraph, which you must all pay uh, attention to. This means that applicants will no longer be required 
to visit VFS branch to collect physical paper-based copies of the waiver letters. Instead, starting today, that is the 29th of August 2024, with ZEP holders and later all applicants will conveniently receive digital waiver letters in PDF format through email. These digital letters can be used to submit a mainstream visa application going forward. So what this means is that if you have been sent your waiver outcome through email, you need to download that and use it to apply for a general work visa. You don't necessarily need to go to uh, VFS offices to collect your waiver outcome. But it doesn't mean that the waiver is no longer needed. As you can hear, as you can see that these digital letters can be used to submit a mainstream visa application going forward. So you still need to use these waiver outcomes to submit your application for a general work visa or any mainstream visa, be it a business permit or whatever. Then, of course, for those who want to go traditional, who are against the change, I know most of us are very, uh, we still choose to be primitive, we still choose to be conservative, and we want to do things as we have been doing all along. There is a section for you towards the end, and it's circled. Applicants who still prefer to collect hard copies of ZEP waiver letters at branches will still be able to do so. The department would like to ask applicants to not be doubtful when they receive an outcome digitally via email from the following official addresses and they are written there, the no reply addresses. So this is it. Those who have gone to VFS and have been told that they no longer need the waivers, you now are answered, you still need the waivers. If you have applied for a waiver and you have not yet been granted an outcome, don't apply for a general work visa. If you do apply, don't book an appointment to go and submit because you will be rejected. You need to have a waiver first. For as long as the you are on the ZEP and the permit, the mainstream permit that you want to apply for, require certain things that you cannot meet. You need to waiver those. So I hope we answered there. Uh, and then there are, except those who are applying for a ZEP extension. If you are applying for a ZEP extension, you don't need a waiver. You just need your ZEP. So I hope we answered. And then there are those who have been sending me messages uh, where they've been sent a waiver outcome and they don't know what to do with it. I will take you through the process. Here is one who received. Uh, and these, these email addresses are written ZEP1, D-H-A-S-A, ZEP1, ZEP2, ZEP3, ZEP4. As though as you have seen under that statement that there are email addresses that the minister then referred to and said, don't be doubtful when you receive emails from those. So you open it, it says, Dear applicant, this email contains your outcome decision for your waiver application submitted for VFS under reference number TR, blah, blah, blah. Kindly ensure that you also collect the original from the VFS office where you submitted the application. Please click the link below to view, download the PDF document. This document is password protected and please use your date of birth format in this format. Uh, as your password to unlock then there is a link which is in blue so as the minister said this is an automated message which has always been used over time so they haven't yet dealt with it so they kindly ensure that you also collect the original from vfs is now optional you can go and collect you can still use this one it's just the same thing so you go to this uh section which is in blue at the end of the message you click on it, it will take you to this message where it says VFS web form. And then you enter your date of birth in the format that is written. The DD is for date. Then there is a dash. Don't put slash because there is a dash there. Put the dash as it is put. Then you put your month 01 if you are, in, you are born in January. Then it, 
on the section, then you put a, a dash, and then you're here in 1984, then you click submit. After you have clicked submit, it will say downloaded, uh, message has been downloaded. Then it will download on here on top, you will see your downloads, then you click them, it will open, here is the waiver of this particular applicant. It's as simple and straightforward. So I hope I have answered you then. Uh, if you still have any more questions, please don't forget, uh, don't hesitate to use the comment section underneath this video to ask your questions. If you realize that maybe there have been too many questions and we might not have seen yours or haven't responded to yours or you not, you won't have time to go and check again, just send me a WhatsApp message on plus two seven seven three nine six two three zero seven five plus two seven seven three nine six two three zero seven five don't phone send a text message don't phone i mean don't phone and don't send a voice note unless and until we've agreed on that so i hope we are clear on that you can go and enjoy your weekend thank you very much don't forget to subscribe like this video and share it